What's up, everybody? It's Make It Make Sense. And the theme of this video is going to be gay for pay. <laughs> like the video as... Like the video as the intro plays, because we got a lot to get into. I was listening to Make It Make Sense. Shout out to Make It Make Sense. I was listening to Make It Make Sense. Shout out to Make It Make Sense. Make Thank it you. It makes sense to me intellectually. Make it make sense. <laughs> make it make sense. Big moves. Surfer. Make it make sense. Tell me how you squeeze it. Make it make sense. Tell me about the bangs that you say. Make it make sense. Tell me about the things in your dream. Hey, let me work out all the things in between. Make it make sense. Tell me how you squeeze it. Make it make sense. Tell me about the things that you say. Make it make sense. Tell me about the things in your dream. Hey, let me work out all the things in between. Make it make sense. No, no, this is the party. Oh, why? Right. I just come back when everybody get here. No, no, stay. <laughs> no, no, it's cool. I just come back later when everybody get I here. said stay! <laughs> oh, 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 did he? All right, I'm here. Party with me, Dad. I'll be the first one. You okay? Uh, <laughs> where, where everybody at? It's just me and you in here today. Hmm? Yeah. Now come dance with Brother Love. I mean, ain't, ain't no music playing right now. I said dance for brother love. Take that. <laughs> okay, okay, I gotta get serious, cause I'm sad, y'all. In terms of this windy stuff, I know y'all woke up to exactly what. Hold on, why is this unplugged? Hold on, let me get my microphone. Okay. Uh, I know you guys woke up to this. A blind man could see that she was struggling with some type of cognitive issues when she did not know what a podcast was, walking around aimlessly. There's still, you know, she's an adult, but still allowing her to drink when she was clearly on the decline. When I saw this, my heart broke for Wendy. And I also feel like this documentary is exploitive. Maybe she needs the money, but this exploited the hell out of this lady. When we last spoke, you've always been like honest with me and like put me in my place. Yeah. You know what I mean? In like the most motherly, kind way. That's why I love you so much. First off, y'all know good and goddamn well, Wendy would never allow anybody to film her without her wig. Never would Wendy allow anybody to film her without her wig. Now, her wig might be up a few inches, like Omarosa pointed out, but she's going to have a wig on. Because even when I was going through my darkest times, like, you never... And shouldn't this conversation be with her child? How did the newly virginal Black China get on this documentary? She interviewed you once before she was on the decline. Y'all weren't like BFFs. She has a BFF who would come, I believe, from California and sit in the front of the audience. She had like one real, real friend. That's who should be there with her, not Black China. Use that against me. You know what I mean? And that's how you know that the love is like genuine and it's always yeah. going to be there. You know, and I'm always be here for you, like straight up. You can call my phone whenever. I'm so serious. And I think I'm going to be back and forth from New York, so I'm going to be coming. Why would she call you? In what reality would Dr. Angela White be the one that Wendy Williams calls as she's battling dementia? And this music that their Lifetime is using with it? To see you more. Well, my real name is Wendy Hunter. Hunter. Broke my heart. broke my heart and black china doesn't even know what to do this, with this black china does not have the emotional intelligence to deal with this at all yep mm -hmm. and i'm divorced yes he's got no money yeah Yeah. This yeah. is really bad. 
This is extremely I sad. So do I. I love you. So do I. I wanted to watch this documentary, but now I'm rethinking it. I thought I would watch it, maybe do an open panel, but this is heartbreaking. We are literally, I mean, for some of us, or I'm sure a lot of us in this chat have had an experience with maybe a grandparent or a parent or a loved one who's battled dementia or um, Alzheimer's. Um, I know my grandmother had Alzheimer's. It's a horrible disease. I would rather Wendy spend out the rest of her days around her son, her dad, maybe or maybe not her brother, and just be in a happy place away from a camera. Because none of us really wanted to see her like this. And Bondi says, I have to watch. Bondi, let us know how this how it goes. Um, Ibeen and company says, y'all got to watch her niece on The View this morning. And she explained that Wendy wanted to do this. They filmed before she got sick. Just sad. Abeen, Wendy's been sick for a long time. We saw her on the streets. I think that this was a money grab. I really do. But thanks for the super chat. Um, Lovejoy says, praying for Wendy. She was my nighttime entertainment for years. We will never forget you. I would say maybe the first eight seasons, I would be at work listening to that show. <laughs> when Wendy had it, Wendy had it. Um... When she all when she told Omarosa, I could see you maybe could use a little wrestling right in here. When when Wendy had it, Wendy had it. But um, yeah, it, it's getting really bad. Um, it says Guardian has filed a sealed lawsuit against Lifetime's parent company, could possibly trying to block Wendy's documentary release. Um, according to TMZ, Wendy's Guardian, Sabrina Morrissey, has filed a lawsuit against the parent company of Lifetime. Unfortunately, the lawsuit is sealed, meaning the public can't exactly see the details as of now. In the documents that TMZ did obtain, it's noted that Morrissey is asking the court for a restraining order, which possibly means she's trying to stop the documentary from hitting TV screens. She's also asking the judge for injunctive relief, meaning that the judge may step in and grant the order prior to the court hearing, which is next week. I mean... I don't think it's going to happen, to be honest with you. I think the, the documentary is signed, sealed, and delivered. And from what we've already seen, but let's get into something ridiculous. Let's do our Black History moment for the day. Our Black History moment is going to be this white man telling Black people why they're going to vote for Trump. I don't know if you guys saw this, but this is... This is some shit. It was on social media last night. Very interesting. As you see, black support eroding from Joe Biden. This is connecting with black America because they love sneakers. They're into sneakers. They love the, you know, th this is a big deal, certainly in, in the inner city. So when you have Trump roll out his sneaker line, they're like, wait a minute, this is. Are y'all voting for Trump because he has a sneaker line? Are black people so small, insignificant that you think that rolling out some ugly ass sneakers is going to lock in our vote for Trump? I need the black people, the black Trump people who watch Fox News to let me know if y'all are still going to be watching Fox News after this shit. We are deciding an election because Trump is producing sneakers. Has anybody ever seen Trump in a sneaker? I know Hillary was walking around with some hot sauce pandering, but what the do you call this shit? We're going to vote for this man for some sneakers. All right. Cool. He's reaching them on a level that defies and is above politics. The culture always trumps politics. And Trump 
understands culture like no politician I've ever seen. Question for you. I'm going to leave it at that. <laughs> I'm going to leave it at that. <laughs> okay, y'all. So let's do this first because I, I got an Andy Cohen story. That one might go for tomorrow. This Tasha K thing, it was crazy. I watched this whole interview. And this was Tasha during the whole interview. Tasha got this man, who I'm effectively calling gay for pay, to say anything and everything she thought she could possibly get out of him. Here's the thing, though. I think Larry might sue him. He's already threatened to sue Craig, and he spilled all his own tea today. He spilled it on Conscious TV. Um, I will link the video for Conscious in the description. But for the time being, Larry is spilling his own tea. So we're going to listen to this before I break down exactly what was said in this Tasha K interview. Um, who is this man? This is Larry's accuser. Now, typically, anytime somebody alleges that somebody grooms them, I, I typically believe them. I would say 99% of the time, but I don't believe this. And I'll let you guys know when I recap this Tasha K interview. But for now, this is Larry spilling his own tea to Conscious TV. Everybody's into clicks, likes, views. Get your money. Enjoy yourself, I don't mind. And you can tell any story that you want to tell, I don't mind that either, as long as you are spelling my name correctly, because I know how to use all of this to my advantage. Um, and thanks for building me up. But what I don't understand here. Um, I like this question. Um, I don't think you, you can't fix stupid. Voted okay. So anyway, I don't know. I can't actually. I don't know what name you go by, but it says Mims. Why are you shitting on China? She always. She had always gave Wendy her due respect for urging her to be the best representation of self. You lack kindness. No, China lacks emotional intelligence to deal with somebody who's battling dementia. If you tell me that China did this documentary for free, then I will agree with you that I lack kindness. But if she got paid. To show up to this documentary, she was not doing this out of the kindness of her heart, and she was not capable of really walking Wendy, who was struggling to actually film this scene through this scene. So if you, you can be a China fan, I actually really enjoy this comment. I always tell you guys to keep me honest. But in this situation, I think everybody involved with the documentary, starting from Wendy, who was completely exploited. They say that Wendy gave her okay for the documentary, but we now know, sorry, uh, Larry Reed and Conscious. We now know that that man who was her manager, who was actually a jewelry salesman, who was trying to put her on a podcast, had to have known that her cognitive abilities were not up to par to put her in front of a camera, a microphone, or anything. But he still tried to do it. And he did it on the strength of, oh, this is what she wants to do. China signing up for this was just another check for China. Sorry. That doesn't mean that I don't give China credit for, you know, beating her drug habit and changing her life. But in terms of this scene and Lifetime putting this out because they knew that this would tug at people's heartstrings, it was exploitive. And her being in the scene and not raising her hand and saying this is not right, but still collecting her check was also exploitive. Thank you for the super chat. And I love for you guys to keep me honest, but this is one of those times where I'm not I'm not wavering on how I feel about them doing this documentary. Um the Donat show says it's mocking the fact the Democratic puppets tales shows on vote days. Jordan sneaker lines wrapped on voting days. Um I'm not going to disagree. Uh, when Jordans were really, really popping, were people wrapped around? Were more people out to get Jordans than voted? Yeah. So I'm not going to really argue that point. <laughs> uh, 
But that doesn't mean that we are going to vote for a candidate because they released a sneaker. Um, and I, did I get this one? Thank you for the super chat. Did not. Um, Lovejoy said, "Praying for Wendy." She, oh, okay, I think we got all of them. Um, we got like fifteen hundred in the chat. Definitely hit the like button. Um, okay, so let's get back to Larry exposing himself. No pun intended. Absolutely no pun intended. That was my bad. <laughs> my bad. Is why he's obsessed with me saying who I have had any form of sex activities with. He's talking about Craig. And it wasn't yeah. any of those guys' business that day. The video I showed you yesterday where Milan Christopher and Craig the writer were drilling Larry about if he was gay or not. When I was on TS platform, then what she brought me up there for. Um, I believe that me and Maddie have a good relationship. And she wouldn't do anything like that. I haven't seen Um, Where is it? I just lost the picture. Hold on. God dang it. Where is it? Um, somebody said, Mim, she did not get paid. Where is my stream yard? Okay. Um, Aston said, Mim, she didn't get paid. How do we know she didn't get paid? If you can send me something, DM me the information. If she didn't get paid, I will correct that. Um, I will correct it. I will say a retraction, but for the time being, I think that it was a pay gig. In her move like that any other time. So that energy that I peeped on the platform at that time was definitely Craig originated. And that's when I realized while I was sitting there, I said, okay, Vincent has went and told these guys a story. I don't know what the story is, but he's clearly shared something that was private. And so I went to Vincent and I asked him, you knew about that. I told mm -hmm. him, um, I think people are probably going to be questioning why you recorded a Vincent, but they and don't I just told them why. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they don't know. They don't know we all had a relationship always. Yeah. So you knew. So we had talked, me and you, and I said, I think that's when I told you that me and Vincent have had sexual deals. Um, okay, nameless says, and you get paid to talk about the very same people. Recklessly, I'm a black man that will defend any black woman. I lost my mom to the same disease. The same disease that China had or the same disease that Wendy had? I'm not quite sure what you're talking about. I'm a black man that will defend any black woman. Who are you defending? Are you trying to say that black China does have the emotional intelligence to film a scene with Wendy Williams while her cognitive abilities are not up to par? Did you see the scene? I would think that you would be defending Wendy against being exploited. But exploitation, as long as it's with Black China, is okay? Okay. Thanks for the super chat. I maybe didn't even tell you. I'm very, I don't even, if it's my, my business, I tell it. But if it involves you, I ain't gonna tell that. I mean, I'm gonna take that to my grave. And I just couldn't believe that he told it. And I didn't understand why. I said, so what was the point? What was the point of that? So then, but that at that moment, and I think that was maybe 19, is when I realized, okay, so here we go. I always knew what Vincent was disgruntled about and what he wanted from me that I couldn't give him. I knew about that on a personal level, as far as a relationship. I could never give him that. I can't give that to anybody, married or not. Now, for those of you to give perspective, because y'all saying cheating on Lisa, cheating on Lisa, it's not the case. Me and Lisa know our relationship was on and off again for 18 years. Um, on and off again for about half, well, more than half of our relationship. It was just tumultuous. But... Um, now, Craig initially said in the video that he was apologizing to Lisa, but after listening to the interview with Tasha Kay and Lester, 
the Tasha K. Lester interview. Lester is this guy, the soccer player. I'm starting to feel like Lisa was completely aware, allegedly. Because at one point, Larry was going to marry him off to Lisa. So to me, that puts more questions into play. If you were having a 13-year relationship, Vincent, with Larry, did Lisa not know? It's starting to feel like, I mean, and, and Lisa is now, I guess, a proud lesbian, which is Larry's ex-wife. It's, uh, none of this adds up. I'll be trying to make things make sense, but this one was a tough one. Because this is some crazy, this is a Tubi movie. It has everything. Prostitutes, sex workers, lawsuits, um, group play. It has everything. A ton of allegations. To say that I'm in a relationship with somebody, <laughs> a sexual relationship, and it's been shot like it's something like a mistress or a mister on the side of my wife at the time, that is 100% inaccurate. It's just not true. It's wrong. It's a misrepresentation. Now, I want you to think about anybody you messed around with more than one time coming out and telling the world y'all were in a sexual relationship. It don't, it don't make no sense. I mean, if I'm in a sexual agreement relationship with you and it's me and you, and it's some, maybe even emotional, the way it sounds to me, it's been shot as something that is not, and it's not that. Which later on, I'm going to explain in detail. I, I guess if I'm asked. I see one day they got to do an interview. I don't know what they're going to ask. You know, but I don't never tell people you can't ask me nothing. So I got to fly to LA for the interview. So I'm pretty sure they're going to ask me. But that's the truth. And to anybody else that's saying anything else or taking whatever Vincent is saying, that's fine. Take what Vincent, like I told Craig, you can support your friend. But just make sure that whatever you repeat that your friend is saying, that you can stand with that because there's this narrative that's been shot that there's a misappropriation of funds and all this kind of stuff. Well, that is illegal. And that is a problem. My lawyers did see it. Bingo. Okay. This is what I wanted you guys to hear. This to me is a, I'm going to sue Craig the writer. And it would seem as if he was going to sue Craig the writer and Lester, who just reiterated the accusations that he was stealing from the church and the accusations that he did um, mess with Levantre while he was underage. And the only person who I've not heard him talk about suing is Vincent. And Vincent's the one that got all this started. So it's, again, I, I try to make sense of a lot of it. I try to like listen to everybody's point of view, but I don't understand why Craig the writer can potentially have a lawsuit for alleging that you misappropriate church funds. But Vincent, who said it, is not. Or you haven't mentioned a lawsuit about him. What Craig did was basically just insinuate that you were gay. The rest of it was like minutia. Vincent is the one that really got it popping and got people talking. I had never heard anything about Larry Reed misappropriating funds prior to Vincent. So it would seem that Vincent was the source. And they are highly upset. Anybody on this YouTube that's saying that, unless I just like decide, look, y'all leave them alone, you're going to be sued. And you're not going to be sued for defamation only. You're getting sued for something called interference. And you know, I have not sued anybody and not won. So just stop that. And that's all I want. Somebody say semantics, but at least you're finally trying to be honest. I don't have an honest problem. I'm private and confidential. And that was nobody's business. And, and Lisa probably going to be upset that she said, don't share that because that ain't nobody's business. It's not. It's nobody's business. That's between me and Lisa and Vincent. And Vincent should have never came out publicly. He could have texted and called me and Lisa to have a, a conversation. And then she could have shared with him what she already knew. But he done it like this to be malicious. I mean, he mad at me, mad as hell. And I can't, I mean, I can't blame him because life is hard. And I made his life very easy. And now that's gone. And that's just it. So this whole Larry not honest, man, you don't know me. You don't follow my platform. I am the most honest person on the face of the earth. As far as I've met. So that's not the case. He will just want none of your damn business. And it should have been nobody's business. But he wanted to, I guess, injure me. 
Um, it was a failed attempt. It actually is making my community stronger and every relationship in my life stronger. I didn't even know I was this loved. I really didn't know. I mean, I, I, I didn't listen. There's one woman that sent me $10,000. She said, I want you to take it and take them same people back to Dubai. <laughs> who is this woman? That's what I want to know. The real question is who has 10 grand? Holla at me. <laughs> uh, city boys are winning. This man said he got $120,000 um, laying around, saved up from Larry. That wasn't the money that he he blew. Uh, the city boys are winning. Ma'am, you can, I was about to say you can have my account number for 10K. No, just go ahead and give me cash. <laughs> you know, I have been working and helping people for real since I was a teenager. So you got generations, parents done had their kids and I done prophesied and miracles done happen. So this thing is generational. So when you're talking about trying to take me down, you wasting your time because the only person can take me down is me. So y'all have all this fun out here on this um, internet and get your um, clicks and your likes and your views. And then when you take my name out of your title, nobody's going to watch your ass. All right, that's it. Oh, and shout out to the content creators like Conscious TV because he is the first one to always tell the truth of the matter because he can. He knows my community, my ministry, my contract is including Benson and has known for years. So y'all can't talk on it the way he does. He didn't shout me out. Um, okay, so <laughs> we got over 1,900 in the chat. Definitely hit that like button if you're new to the channel. So in that, you heard Larry admit that there was a relationship with Buddha. Um, Charlemagne always says, don't let people spray you with your own tea. That's basically what it amounts to. But he acknowledged the relationship. So I would say a good 60 to 70% of the things that Buddha said were about his sexuality. Well, now Larry has owned up to that or went ahead and is more comfortable talking about it. And in this clip explained why he lied about his sexuality in front of T.S. Madison Milan and technically he didn't owe the Craig the writer anything, but let me just say this while we're at it. This is some messy shit. Now, I do know and I do, you know, believe a lot of the things that Vincent said. But Vincent, you just met Craig and them and you are working with them and you are telling them the inner workings of your sexual relationship with your 13 year on and off man mistress situation. Why would you be telling them that? Technically, Craig, the writer, you know, T.S. Madison seems to have, you know, I liked her position when I showed you guys that clip where she was like, if this is what this man says his sexuality is, why are y'all pushing? But Craig, the writer, you see he's funny, cynical, and don't really give a F. Why would you be exposing the inner workings of who you've been laying it low, spreading it wide, pussy popping on a handstand for This is that's some messy shit. <laughs> that's some messy shit. And you're apologizing to Lisa, but from the sound of it, Lisa is very happy, very well paid, um, living her best Robin Dixon life. <laughs> but that was from Larry's mouth. So the whole gay thing and outing him. You know, just like Lester said, maybe this frees him for that. I never agreed with Vincent naming all those names because he didn't say that those people broke any laws. They were just consenting adults who were all messing around, allegedly. Uh, Brandon says, do you think Larry is a top? I don't know what Larry Reed does or does not do. I can just tell you what the people said in this interview. And Lester said... Uh, Lester said Larry topped him. Um, Tasha K, bro. 
I'm not doing that. Uh, yeah. So let's get into. We got one more super chat. Um, Jill says, as someone who took care of my mom with Alzheimer's, every person who allowed Wendy to do an interview in this state is a piece of shit. That's kind of that's where my mind is at with it. To be honest with you, that's literally how I feel. Not that you think he's a mattress, y'all are. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and Andre says, after Conscious told us about the landlord saying Vincent Note 8000 got sat out by the marshals and is being sued, I said this should be over because the story is about sexuality. I don't care who he bans. A lot of people feel that way. I never thought the lead to that story was about Larry's sexuality. For me, the lead to that story was the allegation that that man was stealing from the church. That is some receipts that Vincent is going to have to provide because i never heard anything about that until him but let's get into tasha k in this interview so the players are lester who has done several interviews alleging that larry reed um was his employer slash lover but on this interview he effectively called him a trick the word for the day or the quote for the day is gay for pay because has has Mims has CTV or Larry Reed contacted you? I don't think Larry Reed knows who I am. Um, I do follow CTV, uh, but no, neither has contacted me. Um, <clears throat> how do we know the lint the information given by CTV regarding landlord was factual? I we don't, but um, CTV said that. In the response video, Vincent acknowledged that that was true. Okay, y'all. So gay for pay is is what it is. City boys are winning. So the interview basically starts, and this is why I, I'm gonna give you guys the facts. A couple things I'm choosing to leave out. Um, but if you want to watch the interview, you need to watch it through um Tasha K. But basically, this is a effing Tubi movie. You have international soccer star from Trinidad and Tobago who is openly bisexual and trisexual sees the fight between Bishop Whitehead and Larry Reed. Now in that fight, y'all, you got two grown men basically arguing about whose Rolls Royce truck was newer. So if you if you are on the internet talking about my Rolls Royce truck is newer, you are going to attract the city boy. Notice the iced out, I think that's Cartier watch. I think that's a Cartier Santos. No. <laughs> he reached out to Larry because he felt that Larry was a mark. He, out of his own mouth, said he knew how to work Larry. Because he felt like Larry was effeminate, he felt like he was gay, and he heard everything that him and Whitehead were saying. If we're going to talk about a mastermind here, it's Lester. He blew through his own soccer money, allegedly, and found, and found a new career in sex work. But we'll get into that. So he reaches out to Larry, and um, he says soon after that, Larry... Uh, what is a trisexual? Well, a trisexual in my eyes would be somebody who is actively comfortable in their sexuality and willing to try anything that turns them on. So that's what I would consider a trisexual. Is it a real thing? No. But is it, he's very comfortable in his own skin. This man is very, I don't know. Part of him is like childlike. The other part is like obnoxious and the other part is like absolutely sinister. But um, yeah, so he reaches out to Larry, gets Larry to get him a hotel room before he even meets Larry. Larry gets him this expensive hotel room and then an, eventually an expensive apartment. Um, He says that he was running up the hotel bill. I, I believe he said it was in Brickell. 
which is a decent part of Miami. Um, he was running up the bill with and bringing girls and everything else into the place. Uh, when he finally does actually physically meet Larry, he is right away convinced that Larry is a trick. The whole time, Tasha is like this. Offering this man wine. And he's taking it all. In the I don't, the first 10 minutes, he says Larry is unattractive. Um, Y'all don't get on Tasha K's bad side. <laughs> don't get on Tasha K's bad side. I don't know what happened. Like I said, I like Tasha K and Larry as friends. I don't know what happened, but this was definitely a hit job on Larry Reed. He said, um, he goes on to say that he talks about Archbishop Jordan and then Tasha K is smiling like the Cheshire cat. What about him? Is he gay? He said, no, I don't know anything about him. I just know that we were FaceTiming one time and the other bishop or clergyman who was with him was talking about how attractive I was. So now Tasha is like, okay, what else? He alleges that Larry's mentor, I think his name is Archbishop Jordan, um, lives vicariously through Larry. As in, he is aware of Larry's lifestyle and kind of relishes in living it because he can't. So then Tasha throws some salt out there saying, well, he's been married for a long time, but he has a switch in his walk. Now, Tasha, in this interview, drops the F-bomb. She drops the F-bomb in front of a man who is openly bisexual. That was interesting. Uh... Uh, what's going on? We're talking about Tasha K interviewing one of Larry Reed's alleged accusers slash this man was alleging that Larry was his trick. Um, okay. So <laughs> I, I, <laughs> Bishop Jordan is over there like that's if if Tasha K could get sued by who's that little short guy? The little short one. The one that was in Soul Plane. If she could get sued by him, somebody will put it in the comments. Um, do y'all think that Larry will sue her? Because this man said a hell of a lot in this interview. Kevin. Yeah, Kevin Hart. If Kevin Hart sued, do y'all think that Larry will sue? I ain't got it. <laughs> we'll see. Um, he alleges that the first time he spoke to Bishop Whitehead was like seven days ago. But if you remember in the initial video that Vincent played, he had audio recording of Larry believing that Bishop Whitehead had actually implanted... Lester, the pansexual chef, into his orbit to get dirt on him. We now find out that Lester concocted that scheme himself. He contacted, or he was in contact with, with Bishop Whitehead because he has a SEX tape of he and Larry that he wants to release freely. He just wants to give that. Now, who is trying to watch this? tape i don't know but he feels like he feels very strongly about releasing the tape the thing is larry has already said he's been in relationships so i don't know that it would have the same impact but okay tasha says why don't you release it on OnlyFans to make money i did not know you could do that wouldn't that be revenge p if sending a tape of somebody who did not know they were being taped to somebody else is considered revenge pee. How would posting it on the internet 
not be revenge pee. Somebody said I like less though. Not Tasha would like. <laughs> if Tasha did watch that tape, I no, I don't think Tasha would watch that tape. I don't think Tasha would watch that tape. Um, so yeah, he says he has a tape uh of them two getting it on. He said he was able to save $120,000 from Larry. He was sending 80% home. So he was basically running through the money. I think they said it was somewhere around $9,000 a month to be a second chef. He was running through the money, but he was sending $8,000 to... I mean, he was sending 80% of it home to the island. Um, The King Payne guy posted some receipts of... Lester having like cash apps and Zales directly from Larry that were not affiliated with his payment. <sighs> he says that Larry is now close friends with his family and he believes that Larry leaked a tape of him, Lester, being with men and transgender women. Apparently he was in some group session with all kinds of people and Larry had the tape He's alleging that Larry gave it to his sister so that it could be released and it would embarrass him. If you guys know anything in the island, he says in his island and in some, I think like Jamaica and stuff like that, you could still be stoned for being gay. So he feels very strongly, and this is where we're going to get to motive. He feels very strongly that Larry was part of the reason why that got released and that Larry has kind of bought his family. And that his family has turned against him. But it was very embarrassing for him to be an international soccer star in Trinidad and Tobago and then a tape get released of him messing with men. He also says that um, he sent Larry a tape with some objects up his poop shoot. But he would be very upset if Larry released that. <laughs> <laughs> okay um he said that he was sending him um images and videos of him enjoying objects up there to make larry feel more powerful this is why i'm telling you this guy was like 10 steps ahead this is also why i did this one later this was supposed to be lunchtime but i was like i can't have a drink <laughs> Make it make sense. You have to remember you're not better looking than Jesse. She meant Jesse Smollett. They said I'm not better looking than Jesse Smollett. Uh if you don't get the joke, it's on my Instagram. Follow me and make it make sense now. Look, I gotta keep my uh I gotta keep my my monetization here. So yeah, I gotta choose my words wisely. <laughs> Um, he said they were having, they were in an intimate relationship, but then this is where he goes on to insinuate that he knows that Larry has some type of illness. So I'm not getting into all that. Um, he also says that Larry is five inches. So he was okay with Larry going up his poop shoot because he didn't feel it. This is... <laughs> <laughs> uh his words not mine he also he says that larry told him that the holy spirit was in his sperm so then tasha um tasha says is there a possibility that you are hypersexual and he didn't technically know what that meant so tasha explained that because, you know, how much money you have and you were able to mess with any woman. Now, he's only saying he's messing with women. But we're going to get to the part where. I'll just tell you now. At one point in Atlanta, when he was with Larry at a club, some celebrity or some uber rich man came up to him and offered him $10,000 to sleep with him. He says, sure, because at this point. He is effectively gay for pay. Unfortunately, I guess whoever it was didn't turn him on. 
and he kind of alluded to, you know, because it was a man, but technically I think it was because of whoever that man was, because we now know that he does mess with men and transgendered women. He said that he couldn't keep it up. So he got some Viagra and the Viagra still couldn't keep it up. I wonder if it was Medea. I mean, let me not say that. <laughs> I didn't say it. I'm just wondering who this man was who offered him 10000 to sleep with him and couldn't keep it up. Um, he said that because he couldn't keep it up, the man just gave him 5000 But it was at this point that he realized, I could be gay for pay because these people are willing to trick off a lot of money. So Tasha is over there still pouring him liquor, talking about, so he's a trick, right? Larry's a trick. That's what we're saying. Larry's a trick. You need some more liquor? Would you like some more wine? Go ahead and drink up. Drink up. <laughs> the liquor is free. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um. Okay. So he said that Larry was basically upset anytime that anybody who was more powerful, who had more money, was in the room. Um, he likes for he likes to be the most powerful person in the room. Um, let's see. He says that when he is with the transgender, he's hey, he has the best of the best transgender. As to what that actually means, I don't know. Um, he believes that he is not gay gay. And due to him eating multiple uh, weed-infused gummy bears, that's how he's able to mess with Larry. Um, he also says that Larry is a one-minute man. Now, this was interesting. He got upset. Now, when Larry did his response video that I watched but that Larry deleted the same night, he watched it. And he said he was upset that Larry didn't claim him. Larry basically said, wait, no, that was a, the night before. Larry basically said that he wouldn't be with anybody who was broke and couldn't do for themselves. And, you know, did you see my wife? Why would I, you know, or my ex-wife? Why would I be with him when, you know, you can see my ex-wife? But this guy seemed kind of upset about that. Um, He mentioned another one of Larry's friends. I'm not going to. He didn't say that this friend did anything to him, so I'm not really with that whole exposing people who aren't really a part of the story. He goes on to say, Lester goes on to say that he was also taken advantage of at the age of nine. And um, the person who took advantage of him passed away from HIV. And he feels as though that experience is what has led him to um, engaging in intimate situations with men this was crazy and also goes to why he's doing this his daughter's principal asked her about that leaked sex tape and he had to explain to his daughter that he's not actually gay and that um you know sometimes adults do bad things and he's gonna end up with a woman so to me what it sounds like is what we've seen from a lot of people who are victims of abuse, who aren't necessarily, who don't really consider themselves gay, but they have a proclivity to mess with the same sex due to what happened to them as a child. I feel like that's probably, based on what Lester was saying, he's not comfortable actually acknowledging that. And as a victim of abuse, I don't think he has to. He seems to be very upfront and comfortable with who he is. He talks about transgender women that he's been with. He talks about men that he's been with. Um, but he really, I think in the confines of who he wants to be, he wants to be just a straight man who continues to have children and can live comfortably in Trinidad and Tobago when his ass gets deported. Just my opinion. I could be completely wrong, but just listen to this interview um <sighs> so he acknowledges that he lied about ever talking to bishop whitehead from the very beginning i'm sorry but you know it's getting it's giving con artist from the very beginning <laughs> he said he 
got two phones. He used one phone to text himself and pretend to be Bishop Whitehead so that he could then show Larry the text messages saying, Bishop Whitehead's trying to contact me. He's trying to give me this much money to expose you. Um, I'm sorry. I really care for you. And allegedly Larry bought it and offered to pay him double whatever Whitehead was offering him. He says that, <laughs> Tasha says, so Larry met a demon talking about Lester. I was like, okay, is Lester going to give it to her? No. Lester acknowledges that he is Larry's demon. And that he feels like God sent him to take Larry Reed down. Now, this is a little bit, this is a little bit jarring, y'all. So I'm just giving you guys heads up. He talks about wanting to sleep with Larry's ex-wife because Larry was going to allegedly give him the ex-wife to marry so that he could stay in the country. He says that he really wanted to sleep with the ex-wife. And if his daughters were 24 or 25, he would smash them. Anytime somebody is talking about smashing somebody's underage daughter, whether you are aging them up to 24, 25 is weird. If he would, if his daughters were 24 to 25, he would have smashed them too. It was weird. I don't know. I don't know what that's about. He acknowledged that Larry introduced them, introduced him to the daughters and stuff like that. He definitely was in this little inner circle. That was weird. He then goes on to double down that Larry, you know, committed a crime with Levante or Levantre. This is what I think is going to get him in trouble. They are going to watch this. And if you don't have any actual proof, then that's liable. Just saying. He said a lot of things that um, you might get sued for. He goes on to say that he had multiple conversations with Larry where he said to Lester, why don't you just be gay? Everything in life happened for a reason. Now, this is in direct correlation to him being taken advantage of by a man when he was nine. That was pretty disturbing. Um, it says he said that the first time he ever came was with a man, and he feels that's why he's bisexual. Mm. He says that he thought that he would bond with Larry because of Larry's um being taken advantage of as a child as well. But I don't know where you would <laughs> that's bullshit. I'm sorry. You saw a trick, period. All this stuff about I thought we could bond, that's 10, 10 miles down the road. You have said time and time again, you feel this man is super ugly. You are only with them because you feel like his, his D was small and he was quick and he could get money from him. Where in that do we find space for I want to bond with you because you experienced the same trauma that I did? That doesn't make sense. You weren't trying to bond with this man at all. You were trying to use him. And I think the motive behind it is he feels that Larry leaked that tape. So he is going to continue to do these interviews probably until he gets some type of injunction or some type of cease and desist. And Larry better hope that he don't go back to Trinidad and Tobago because if you do that, they're not going to extradite him. So if he gets sent back to Trinidad and Tobago... I guarantee you that tape is going to come out because he there's he won't be held accountable for that. He feels very strongly that Larry outed him through exposing those leaked tapes. And then he goes on to say he finds Larry very ugly, accuses him of using black sand. Now, how we get to I don't know what denomination Larry is. 
but I ain't never heard anybody say that this man was doing voodoo. Lester accuses Larry of using black sand and gave him a book that will give him powers. What? <laughs> I told y'all, this is a Tubi effing movie. A Tubi movie. Like, again, at no point did you see Tasha say this. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. All you kept seeing Tasha do was say, tell me more. Go ahead and tell me more. What happened? <laughs> yes, he is now accusing a pastor of using black sand and giving him a book. And he said he's something about he worshipped his sisters. <laughs> I have never heard anybody say anything about Larry Reed doing voodoo. But Lester has now said it. Not it makes sense he's evil. <laughs> uh, just because he's in the church does not mean he's not a witch. Look, I don't know what this, I don't know at this point. Now catch this, y'all. He wants to sue Larry. Oh, we got a super chat. Uh, Jaybird, thank you so much for the super sticker. Uh, and uh, we got like 2,500 in the chat. I hope y'all hit the like button. This is not my normal time, but there was no way I was going on. Oh, I didn't even put up a thing. Hey, hold on. I, was I don't even have a thumbnail. Nobody told me I didn't have a thumbnail. Y'all are slipping, just like me. <laughs> hold on, let me put up this thumbnail real quick. Maybe somebody did some voodoo on me. Wait, I do have a thumbnail. Why is it not showing? That's weird. Okay. We got like 2,500 in the chat, but we only have 700 likes. Definitely hit that like button. It's a free way to support the channel. Okay, back to the voodoo. Um, He's upset because he feels like Larry sent pictures of him to Vincent. These pictures where he had objects up the poop chute. So he's upset. Now he wants to release a whole SEX tape of the two, but he's upset that Larry sent his private pictures. So then he's like, can I sue him for that? So he's thinking that he can sue Larry for revenge P when he wants to put out the SEX tape, the alleged SEX tape between him and Larry. What is that? Do you have AT&T? No, I don't. You're trying to be slick with a read, Princess. <laughs> um, I'm not even going to... Somebody said, can the voodoo help him with the weight gain? He said some really nasty things. You can watch the interview for that about regarding Larry's weight gain. I mean, weight loss. Um, He alleges that all of the people in, in what he considers Larry's um harem i'm not gonna say that i'm not gonna say that uh i'm not gonna say that you if you want some of those nastier details you'll have to watch tasha k's interview but basically what we got out of lester is he came down he feels he was sent from god to destroy larry Reed. now in that time he got a ton of money which he also made the allegations about the stuff coming from the church. You took the money and you took him inside you, allegedly. As he said, per Larry, once my S-P-E-R-M is in you, my spirit is in you. He was the, he was the taker in the situation. You got a real life city boy. But this one is a dangerous city boy because he don't give a damn. And he's willing to expose it all. Now, how much of it is true? I don't know. Do I believe some of his story? Absolutely. Do I believe some of Vincent's story? Absolutely. I figured out 
I feel like I figured out Lester's motive. Vincent's motive is still kind of unclear. I guess he'll give more when he does that interview. But Larry has spilled his own tea with Conscious TV. So all of the rumors about, you know, him being gay. He talked about his relationship with Vincent. Uh, Mims show modern day Lester. It's giving full blown. I mean, this is modern day Lester. This is just Lester when he was still famous and a soccer player and he got a write up. But yeah, this is Lester uh, modern day. What does full blown mean? Somebody said, could he walk after? Um, he also, yeah, he did say that Larry wants to dominate. And Larry, you know, started pushing him out once he saw that he could not control Lester. Um, when did he do that, Mims? At the start of the video, I showed um, a video of Conscious TV and Larry. And Larry, you know, acknowledged um uh the relationship with vincent and said that he's just a very private person and he doesn't owe people that which i would agree with now i don't know how that factors into the church members and what church what what his denomination believes i'm not getting into all that um queen tulsa says she spoke to lester did lester try to date you Um, let's see if we can go back real, real quick to this. Because you don't know real since I was a teenager. So you got generations. Listen, there's one woman that sent me and that's just it. But he doesn't like this to be malicious. I mean, he met me and Lisa and Vincent and Vincent should have never called interference. And, you know, I have not sued anybody and not one. So just stop that. And that's all I want. Somebody say semantics, but at least you're finally trying to be honest. I don't have an honest problem. I'm just like this. I look, y'all leave them alone. You're going to be sued. And you're not going to be sued for defamation only. You're getting sued for something called interference. And you know, I have not. And that is a problem. Or taking whatever Vincent is saying. That's fine. Take what Vincent, like I told Craig, you can support your friend. But just make sure that whatever you repeat that your friend is saying, that you can stand with that because there's this narrative that's been shot that there's a misappropriation of funds and a relationship with you and this mister on the side of my wife at the time you know lisa it's not the case me and lisa in our relationship with i always knew what vincent was disgruntled about and what he wanted from me that i couldn't give him i knew about that on a personal level as far as a relationship i could never give him that i can't give that to anybody married or not now for those of you to give perspective because y'all saying cheating on lisa cheating on lisa it's not the case me and lisa and our relationship was on and off again for 18 years um on and off again for about half well more than half of our relationship it was just tumultuous but um to say that i'm in a relationship with somebody <laughs> a sexual relationship and it's been shot like it's something like a mistress or a mister on the side of my wife at the time that is 100 inaccurate it's just not true. It's wrong. It's a misrepresentation. Now, I want you to think about anybody you've messed around with more than one time coming out and telling the world y'all were in a sexual relationship. It don't, it don't make no sense. I mean, if I'm in a sexual agreement relationship with you and it's me and you, and it's some, maybe even emotional, the way it sounds to me, it's been shot as something that is not, and it's not that. Which later on, I'm going to explain in detail. I, I guess if I'm asked. I see one day they got to do an interview. I don't know what they're going to ask. You know, but I don't never tell people you can't ask me nothing. So I got to fly to LA for the interview. So I'm pretty sure they're going to ask me. But that's the truth. And to anybody else that's saying anything else or taking whatever Vincent's saying, that's fine. Take what Vincent, like I told Craig, you can support your friend, but just make sure that whatever you repeat that your friend is saying, that you can stand with that because there's this narrative that's been shot that there's a misappropriation of funds and all this kind of stuff. Well, that is illegal and that is a problem. My lawyers did see it and they are highly upset. Anybody on this YouTube that's saying that Unless I just like decide, look, y'all leave them alone. You're going to be sued. And you're not going to be sued for defamation only. You're getting sued for something called interference. And you know, I have not sued anybody and not one. So just stop that. And that's all I want. Somebody say semantics, but at least you're finally going to be honest. I don't have an honest problem. 
I'm private and confidential. And that was nobody's business. And, and Lisa probably gonna be upset that she said, don't share that because that ain't nobody's business. It's not, it's nobody's business. That's between me and Lisa and Vincent. And Vincent should have never came out publicly. He could have texted and called me and Lisa to have a conversation. And then she could have shared with him what she already knew. But he done it like this to be malicious. I mean, he mad at me, mad as hell. And I can't, I mean, I can't blame him because life is hard and I made his life very easy. And now that's gone. And that's just it. So this whole Larry not honest man, you don't know me, you don't follow my platform. I am the most honest person on the face of the earth, as far as I've met. So that's not the case. He just want none of your damn business. And it should have been nobody's business, but he wanted to, I guess, injure me. Um, it was a failed attempt. It actually is making my community stronger and every relationship in my life stronger. I didn't even know I was disloved. I so that's what I was talking about. Um, for the person who said, you know, what did Larry actually say? Um, it sounded like he was, I don't know, at this point. I don't even know at this point. This is a Tubi movie that I didn't expect to be a part of. <laughs> this is a Tubi movie that... <sighs> we got international playboys. Vincent is a man of the cloth. He's a former mistress, allegedly. Uh, Larry Reed is a man of the cloth. Tasha K tried to pull Prophet Jordan into it. We got Tasha K, the blogger, who is... Re it's a lot. <laughs> Not play the clip just like I thought. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all are messy, and I like it. Just as I thought, trash. <laughs> um, Larry Reed was commenting on our mind. I think that Larry, I feel like I remember a video of um, Armand, Larry, and Storm don't really fool with Tasha K. I feel like Storm and Armand, things have kind of thawed, but they're not like friends. Um, Larry did a video with Sherelle, a video with Storm, and a video, or a, a combined video with Storm and Armand Wiggins. Tasha K did an interview with Levantre, Larry's accuser, now Lester. And I think at one point she had teamed up with Bishop Whitehead against Larry. When people don't like you on YouTube, watch out. Watch out. Because the first thing they're going to do is... Do I need to bring the receipt, oh, baby girl? Because oh, well. no. I got receipt. And then they're going to ask you... You suck the dick of a coward. <laughs> uh, Jaybird says, I effed up that first super chat. I'm a virgin to the super chat. I'm a virgin too. <laughs> uh, so what? Saying pussy popping don't get you can. I don't really know. Uh, that's why I did this video kind of late so I could have a drink with it because it was a hell of a lot. It was a hell of a lot. I didn't expect this. We all know Tasha can be messy, but this took it to a whole nother level. Tasha was. That's some hot tea. The whole time. That's some hot tea. You want some more wine? That's some hot tea. What about your girl? That's some hot tea. So you're not attracted to Larry? That's some hot tea. Who was the top? Who was the bottom? That's some hot tea. That was Tasha, this whole interview. <laughs> How much of it is true? I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Uh, do I believe some of it? Yes. Uh, do I think Lester might get a cease and desist our lawsuit? Hell yes. Yes. <laughs> How is Storm involved? Um, I think at the time that Tasha really started going against Larry, um, it only made sense because Armand wasn't cool with Tasha and Storm wasn't really cool with Tasha to talk about, you know, collectively what they had been through with Tasha. Same way that Tasha did with Bishop Whitehead. So, you know, y'all just say no. Look at me. What'd I say? No. Come here. Look at me. Hey, 
Look at me. What? A, no. That's what I was saying. Tasha, stop. Stop, Tasha. Stop. Look at me. What did I say? No. Come here. Look at me. Hey. Look at me. What? A, no. Meanwhile, Lester is all. I'm not gay no more. I am delivered. I don't like men no more. I thought I like women. Women, 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 women. I said women. I'm not gay. I would not date a man. I would not tear a purse. I would not put on makeup. I will. I will love a woman. <laughs> <laughs> and, on, and on that note uh <laughs> i don't even know what to do anymore is there anything left to come out at this point i really feel like people feel that larry is getting his comeuppance because of the people that he exposed. Sorry, I don't know why it got muted. Um, the question was, has Larry gotten like they have put this man through the ringer? And I don't follow him like that. I've seen some of his stuff. I don't personally, I've never seen him expose anybody, but people say that that's what his channel um does. They have put this man through the ringer. Anything and everything you could think of. Uh, Beverly says, Casa Mims, I hope you pointed it up. I just had one drink today because this was too much for me. Honestly, when I was listening to it, I had already heard part of his interview with King Payne, but, um, you know, Tasha K really, you know, King Payne was there and he was getting the mess and it was a lot of my, 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 <laughs> uh, I didn't watch any of the other ones where he, you know, he's doing a Surviving Larry series, apparently. I don't know. I, I don't know how him and Larry had beef or if he's just, you know, speaking truth to power. I don't know. But y'all, this is a lot. And we're just scratching the surface. So I don't know. I don't know. I almost feel like well, you guys can put in the chat. Do you feel like there's more that's going to come out? Would you care that there's more now that Larry is kind of like confirmed that there was some relationship with Buddha or, you know, let me know. Uh, House of Princess says, none of it really gets you demonetized. I curse a lot. The algorithm may think you are less family friendly sometimes and reduces advertisers. Um, Princess, there was times where they would demonetize like all of my videos for like a week or two. So I have to be cautious, but I don't think pussy popping on a handstand is one of those things that'll get you demonetized. Betty Spaghetti says, hey, Mims, are you and Sherelle's world related? She could pass for your big sister. I've never heard that, but no, we're not related. <laughs> so now I'm looking like Jesse, Sherelle, uh, that dude who don't have a tooth, Kimbella's baby daddy, Jules Santana, and Ryan Leslie. I think I just look like me. <laughs> Um, he busted. What's up? Definitely Jesse. I don't see it. I don't think I look like, um, they, they, they were getting me for a while. Every now and then that they'll steal. But okay, guys, I gotta go. Cause I have my, I'm trying to get in shape for y'all. I am, let's just say I heard some bad news last night. But um, there's some things that I know that I could have done better as it pertains to YouTube. Um, one of those things is merch. So I've reached out to a graphic designer 
We're gonna, I'm going to start getting my merch. And I haven't really up to this point treated YouTube like a business. Um, I haven't. I Just be honest with you guys. I've been in a really bad headspace for the last year. I'm getting out of that now. And um, I'm newly motivated to start doing better. Um, even things that I do, I, I have large content creators telling me I'm a dummy because I just support people without them having to support me. I give away free advertising and stuff like that. Um, I've not treated it like a business. I have people who want me to endorse their products. I've not even returned emails. I've really just been trying to keep my head above water. You know what I mean? Like I've been going through a hell of a lot. If you've been with my channel, you know, but I actively today made some phone calls to start getting the business in order. So, uh, you know, I took something that was really not great last night and turned it into motivation today. So hopefully you guys will be seeing a merchandise line relatively soon. I have that meeting next week with the graphic designers and all that. So um, you've been asking since I hit 10,000 subscribers for me to do my merch. And I'm now at like 100 and I think like 33 or 34. And it's time that I start, you know, I just get out here and I have fun with these videos or we talk about like serious matters and it's kind of like my escape from the real world, but I'm going to, um, I'm going to start doing better. You know, you'll probably start seeing endorsements and stuff. I'm working on my body. I have my trainer. I have my out of town trainer. I'm an in town and an out of town trainer. Um, I had some health things go on some stuff with my, like my liver, um, pre-diabetes, all kinds of like crazy stuff. So uh, I'm working on, you know, eating right. When I was caregiving for my sister last year, I stopped eating. I started eating only one time a day. It was all about work and then caregiving. So I'm getting back to me. So if you don't follow me on Instagram, I've been talking about these things on Instagram. Um, yeah, start affirming that things are going to get better. So that's what I'm doing. Uh, Y'all have a good night. I'll see you guys tomorrow because there were some stories we didn't even get to cover because this Tasha Reed, Tasha Reed, this Tasha K, Larry Reed shit is crazy. Y'all have a good night. <laughs>